Hey, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to talk about residents' compensation in Clipper. Everybody knows I'm, I've been working on my Clipper calculation spreadsheet, and so today I've gone ahead and I'm working on adding input shaping, which is another word for resident compensation. So let's go ahead and get started. First, this reference in the spreadsheet, it's also going to be in the video description is the Clipper documentation, which again are excellent on residence compensation, otherwise known as input shaping. And I'll just say input shaping from now on. As you can see from these examples, pictured resident compensation or input shaping is accounting for this ringing and trying to eliminate that in our prints. So let's go ahead and go through the process we need to do to make our measurements. And then we can go ahead and make our calculations and implement that in our printer.config file. In order to start input shaping tuning, we need to set our slicer to some recommended settings. These settings include just a layer height of 0.2, which, which is what I'm using, turning your infill and top layers setting them to zero, using one or two parameters, even better if you can switch it over to base mode. I know. Prusa, Super Slicer, and Cura all have a base mode. So again, you should be able to find those settings. You want to make sure you're using a high speed, and that high speed is between 80 to 100 millimeters per second. You want to search for minimum layer time. At most, you want that set to three seconds. I'll be honest, you had to I had to search around to find that setting in Super Slicer. You want to make sure that the any acceleration control in the slicer is disabled. And then lastly, when you load in this ringing tower model, you don't want to move it on the build plate. You want it to sit exactly as it loads in. It's oriented in the proper direction. Let me just show you. I have my desktop cam. And if you look at the reverse side, you'll notice it says Y and X. So when it, it loads like this on the build plate, you don't want to rotate it or move it at all. Because again, you want to capture the Y and the X axes. Because you're looking at trying to determine the ringing on and the X and Y. You need that information. So you don't want to move this on the belt plate. Step is you need to enter some commands into Flipper in order for the test print to print appropriately. So I've switched over to the console in main sale, one of my printers. And the next thing I want to do is I want to enter the following commands. Before I enter any commands, I need to look at Printer.config file, look through it for square corner velocity. Right now, I can tell you that I don't have square corner velocity set. The default value for square, square corner velocity is five. I haven't messed with that setting, so the default is still active. If you've messed with that setting, you need to go ahead and set it back to five. So that's something important you need to do. Next thing, and again, let me get out of the config and I'm just going to go back over the console and I'm going to go to the whole screen so you can see this a little better. I'm going to go ahead and just copy some commands. So I want to set the max acceleration to deceleration. I'm going to copy this command. And this is over in the spreadsheet as well. Over in the spreadsheet, I have the commands you need to enter. So I can just copy those go over the console, paste them in, run them. And this is just setting up the test. Next, if I have pressure events already set, I need to set that back to zero. Easy enough. Keep going. We have two other commands we need to enter. If we've already messed with input shaping, we need to set things back to zero. And if it says unknown command, that's totally fine. But that basically is showing you that you haven't, you don't have an input shape for setting printer.config, and that's fine. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and set up for the tuning tower. So we enter this command. Once we enter this command, we can go over, and I've already uploaded my file. So there's my ring tower that I sliced with the appropriate settings, and I can just go ahead and hit print. That'll print. It takes a little over an hour maybe to print. That'll print. And then 
once we have the results, we can go ahead and start looking at the ringing. Now, I've gone ahead and I let the whole print run, but it should be noted that if you can clearly start to see the rings right there, I can start to see them right here at about the maybe the one, two, three, four, maybe about the fifth or sixth level. I probably could have stopped the printer right there, just gone ahead and done my measurements. Now, what I'm noticing, this is on the Y side of the print. I'm not really seeing too much ringing now. Switch over to the X side, you can see a lot more. You can see the ring. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and try to make some counts of these rings. I'm going to look multiple places here to see if I can see the rings real well. And in the case of Y, I'm really struggling to see. Uh, the, the rings just aren't jumping out at me, which that's okay. So I can see some rings up here. So I'm going to start with the second ring, and I'm only counting in something I can point with. I'll knock everything on my desk down. So I can see the rings right here. What I'm going to do is start at the second ring, and I can count one, two, three rings. It's just that small little distance. So I count three rings. Why? Now I'm taking my calipers. First thing I'm going to do on my calipers is zero them out millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick measurement. I'm getting my calipers. Like I said, this are really small. So I have three rings, and I'm getting 2.68, which again is really small. So I have that. Go over to my spreadsheet, and I've gone ahead and put in the calculations here. So we had Y. I counted three rings. And the measurement, and I'm getting 2.53. Let's do 2.53. So here's the frequency down here for Y. So what we're going to do, now flip over and do the same for X. Zero this back out. And now I'm on the X axis. Now if we look, we can see the rings really well. Now this, I think I'm actually going to try to mark in here. So I'm going to sit here and get the second ring, and I'm going to count one, two, three, four. Five. Put another mark there. So I've counted five rings. Now I'm going to sit here and measure between those two marks. I get that down so you can see it. So I'm measuring between my two marks, 729. Now I'm also going to mention I had black load on my printer, and I just went with that, and it was a short roll, so I very little left on it. And I probably should use something like yellow, red, or orange. But 7.29. We're going to go over to my spreadsheet again. So we're going to enter in. We counted five rings. And two, nine. Yeah. So these are our two, right down here, two frequencies that we need. So our next step, pretty simple, is we're going to go over to our printer.config file, and I'm going to scroll down bottom of my settings right here. 
and I'm going to copy this code. Copy that. Paste it right here. Now, X frequency for my spreadsheet is, I'll copy that, 68.587. Point these three dots. That number in. Over grab Y, which is 118.577. Back over to the printer.config, delete these three dots, paste this in, and then I can hit save and restart. Now that we've gone ahead, put our frequency information in our printer.config, now we need to actually select input shaper to use to again reduce vibrations. Documentation, if we take a look at it, suggests we start with one called MZV. And we look over further, there are several input shapers that can be selected. Each one of these seem to have a different smoothing effect and different use cases. For my tests, the documentation suggests, again, starting with MZV and then also trying EI. So what I've gone ahead and done is rerun my models and we run the model with MCV, and then I rerun the model with IE, and then taking a look at how model looked and how the ringing looked. So if I go over and look at the results, here's the MVZ model, and I also switched uh, switched colors here so I could better see uh, the ringing effect. And looking at this, in the MVZ. I'm not seeing any MZV. I'm not really seeing any ringing. Um, or if I do, it's really light. Um, and it looks much better than my original model. So from my perspective, and again, with the original model, you can see the ringing really well, where this one, you really can't. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with these results. So what I'm gonna do next is go back over to my printer.config. And to finish this out, all we need to do, go to the bottom of our input shaper section and then add the shaper type we selected. I mentioned I really like the results of MCV. So I'm adding that to my printer.config and input shaper section. Hit save and close. And I'm actually running my printer now, otherwise it would have done the save and restart. Right now, I'm good to go. So on my next print, this will my printer will be using that input shaper, so that should reduce the ring over into my browser. And as I mentioned, I have all in my upper calibration spreadsheet. I have the input shaping section. I have some references. I have the values. You can sit here and values you can edit, user input, or ones you need to edit to suit, suit your needs. It'll run your calculations. And then down here, I've gone ahead and added the extra steps you need to select the uh, various input shaper types. So hopefully you find this helpful. I've put a link in the video description that you go to that link, you'll be able to copy the spreadsheet so you'll have your own copy and you can edit to suit you. I'm going to continue to add the spreadsheet as I find them. I'm probably also going to do a future video on Clipper macros and another one. I'm not really happy with my current set of macros, how they work in Cura. I want to see if I can do a little programming and fix that. So we'll see how that goes. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments. Again, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP. I appreciate your, your time, and if you like what I'm doing, please give me a like or subscribe. Look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Have a good day. Bye.